If you're given a position time graph for an object's motion, how do you determine the corresponding velocity time graph? Or if you're given the VT graph, how do you determine the matching PT graph? Well, I'm Mr. H, and I have some answers for you. So how do you translate graphical information into a verbal description? Well, we have several videos that describe in detail how to do this. But I'm going to assume in this video that you're not at ground zero, that you know something. In other words, I'm going to go a little faster, less detail. But if that doesn't seem to fit your need, try one of the links on the screen to a more detailed description of the relation between graphs and motion. When you interpret a motion graph, you want to learn the answers to four important questions. First, is the object at rest or moving? Second, if the object is moving, is it moving with constant speed or changing speed? Third, if it's moving with changing speed, is it speeding up or slowing down? And fourth, we often use a positive or negative sign to indicate the direction of a vector like velocity. You want to know, is the velocity positive or negative? So here's the skinny on PT graphs. At rest objects are represented by horizontal lines, but moving objects are represented by lines with slope, either positive or negative, but they aren't horizontal. Objects moving with constant speed are represented by straight diagonal lines, but objects moving with changing speed are represented by one of these four curved lines. Changing speed objects are either speeding up or slowing down. So begin at an early point on the graph and read towards the right. Observe whether the line is becoming steeper or flatter. A line that becomes steeper over the course of time represents a speeding up object. Lines that become flatter over the course of time represent slowing down objects. Lines with positive slope represent objects that are moving in some sort of predefined positive direction, like to the right or east or upward. Lines that have negative slope or slope downwards represent objects that are moving in the negative direction. As an example, suppose you have this PT graph and you want to match it to a VT graph. Begin by translating the graph into words using the four essential questions I discussed. When I look at this, I realize the object's moving because the line's not horizontal. Second, I realize the object has a changing speed because the line's not straight and diagonal. Third, I realize that the object is speeding up because the line starts flat and gets steep. And fourth, I recognize the object has a negative velocity because the slope is downward or negative. Now I must translate these words into features of a VT graph that match it. So here's the skinny on VT graphs. At rest objects have a velocity of zero, so the line representing them is on the time axis. But moving objects have a velocity that's not zero. They're located above or below the time axis. Constant speed objects are represented by horizontal lines, but changing speed objects are represented by lines with slope, either straight diagonal or curved lines. A line that gets further from the V equals zero mark over the course of time is speeding up or getting faster, but a line that gets closer and closer to the V equals zero mark is slowing down or getting slower. Any straight or curved line in the positive region of the graph has a positive velocity, but a line in the negative region of the graph has a negative velocity. So now, back to our example problem. I have to translate these words into the features of the VT graph. I know the object is moving, so the line is not on the V equals zero mark. It's either above or below it. Second, I know the object has a changing speed, so the line is going to have some slope to it it won't be horizontal. Third, I know the object is speeding up, so the line will start close to zero and move further and further away from it. And finally, I know that the object has a negative velocity, so the line is in the negative region of the graph. If you're given a VT graph and have to match it to a PT graph, use the same strategy. First, change the VT graph to words, and then the words to a PT graph. Hey, you got this. 
When you get the feel for this strategy, you're going to be a physics wizard when it comes to matching PT graphs and VT graphs. To make sure you got this, why don't you try one of the interactive exercises on our website? You'll find links to them in the description section below. They're pretty awesome. Well, I'm Mr. H, and thank you for watching.